this particular situation between 130 featherweight and 147 welterweight has been brewing since about 2016 really when these youngsters Devin Haney, Tiafimo Lopez, Shakur Stevenson these guys came into the pro game more prominently in this year. Shakur Stevenson actually turned pro 2017 but he came into the game with high prospects and he kind of basically straight away joined that group. And in particular, Devin Haney, well, particular to this video, Devin Haney and Tiafimo Lopez have been campaigning or had been campaigning in that lightweight division for a long time. They've been, they were amateurs at the lightweight division, turned pros and stayed at lightweight for a very long time, especially Devin Haney. Tiafimo, not so much because he came in and he kind of, went straight for the jugular in terms of climbing the ranks. He was trying to climb the ranks and so was Devin Haney. They were both climbing the ranks of particular governing bodies. Devin Haney more particular with the WBC and Tiafimo Lopez more particular with the IBF. What happened was Lomachenko, who was going through the weight classes from featherweight up to lightweight at a rapid rate, in his third fight, he became champion at featherweight, winning this vacant title from Gary Russell Jr., who was 24-0 and at the time. Lomachenko was 2-0 and going into his third fight. Beats Gary Russell Jr. And then in his seventh fight, he's already gone up a weight class and he's taken on Roman Martinez, who was the champion of the WBO at the time at super featherweight. Took his belt in his seventh fight. And then by the time he's got to his 13th fight, he's now fighting Jose Pedraza at lightweight, wins the lightweight title. Now, this seems to be his ceiling. So it seems like he wants to be undisputed here. And with Devin Haney wanting that fight, as well as Tiafimo Lopez wanting that fight, it seemed as though they understood the assignment and knew that Lomachenko weren't really trying to fight anybody that's not a champion. If you're not a champion, he's not trying to fight you. He had a whole heap of amateur fights. He had a very long amateur career. He went to two different Olympics and won gold at both. And now he's turned pro and he's just taken on all comers straight away. Straight pro, straight 12 round fights. He's going into straight away. Winning everything, climbing up the weight classes. So he arrives at lightweight, thinks this is my ceiling. I can't go much higher than this. Really and truly his ceiling was super featherweight in my opinion, but... He's gone up to lightweight. He's a lot smaller than these other guys at lightweight. But he's still winning. Beating Jorge Linares in his first fight at lightweight. And then beating Jose Pedraza and winning a title in his second fight at lightweight. Then he fights Anthony Crawler to like defend it. Before going into a unification fight with Luke Campbell. Now this is where everything kind of gets a bit sticky on the WBC end. Because they're going for a unification fight. But Luke Campbell doesn't have the belt. The belt is vacant. Now, I'm thinking Luke Campbell was number one. Devin Haney was number two or the other way around. I think it was Luke Campbell number one, Devin Haney number two in the WBC rankings. And what I believe should have happened is them two should have fought for the vacant title. And then the winner fights Lomachenko to unify. But that's not what happened. The negotiations went how they went. And they were able to throw this vacant title in for a fight with Luke Campbell, who was number one, I suppose. He was the number one contender in the WBC ranks and subsequently beats Luke Campbell and is now unified WBC and WBO. Devin Haney's going mad talking about, I should have been the one to fight for that belt or I should have fought Luke Campbell for that belt. You are not supposed to be the champion. I'm supposed to be the champion. At this time, Devin Haney had been climbing up the ranks and got an interim belt. For the, from the WBC. Now, these governing bodies don't really regulate their, their rankings properly because if they did, then Luke Campbell would have fought Devin Haney for the vacant title and then there would have been a unification. You can't unify a vacant belt. It doesn't make sense in boxing to unify a vacant belt. But the powers that be made that be the case. Boom. Devin Haney's going mad. What happened is top rank, who is Lomachenko's promoter, Bob Aram, he has made a petition to the WBC to become a franchise champion. There was a new belt that the WBC brought out 
to kind of try to appease Canelo Alvarez and it was called the franchise title. It's disappeared now into thin air. Nobody has a franchise title anymore. It wasn't very long lived. But at the time, it was the hot thing. It was a hot new thing. And it was a criteria that you had to have. And somehow, don't know how, Lomachenko met the criteria and they elevated him to franchise status in the WBC, which meant the WBC title was actually vacant again. And they then gave that vacant title to Devin Haney. <laughs> what? That was That's very confusing. That is a very confusing situation. I don't want to delve into it unless someone asks me to delve into it. But that's how it broke down. While all that was happening, Teofimo Lopez was climbing up the IBF rankings to go and get that IBF belt, which he ended up doing by fighting Richard Comey. And he beat Richard Comey in two rounds, I think. I think he knocked him out in like the second round. It was a brilliant knockout, to be fair. It was a brilliant little two rounds. But Teofimo knocked him out. And at that point there... He is now the IBF champion and he's saying, let's unify Lomachenko. Me and you unify. We can unify. I want to be undisputed. You have all the rest of the belts. That wasn't actually the case. The case was Devin Haney had the WBC actual title. So even though Lomachenko had all the other three, the franchise title was not a title that can be classed in a unification bout as one of the four belts. You have to have the actual WBC belt, which is now at this point with Devin Haney. The franchise title is basically the same as the interim title or any other trinket title. The only difference is it actually can't be moved on from the actual fighter that has it to another fighter. But that wasn't the case in this situation. We'll get to that later. So when Tiafimo ended up fighting Lomachenko, thinking it was undisputed, it was not actually undisputed. It was for the WBA, WBO and the IBF. So it was a unification fight, not an undisputed fight. And with that being said, the WBC was not for up for grabs. And the franchise title isn't a title that you can actually win. But somehow... When Tiafimo defeated Lomachenko, they handed him the WBC title as well. And then he's going around talking about he's undisputed, which he wasn't because he didn't have the WBC title. So, this is where the divas part of these fighters start to come out. The diva part of Tiafimo Lopez really came out at this particular point because after he beats Lomachenko... He starts to shout out that he's undisputed, knowing that he's not. But his dad and himself properly doubled down, talking about they're undisputed, they're undisputed. And they went to go and fight their mandatory for the IBF, which was George Cambosis. Now, it's like Tiafimo Lopez thought he had reached the top of the mountain or something. He thought he had made it. He thought he's the man now. Now I'm supposed to get the big money. Everybody wants to watch me fight now, which wasn't the case. Nobody still didn't know about Teofimo Lopez because even though Lomachenko was the pinnacle of the time in that then weight classes, even Lomachenko wasn't very well known throughout the whole boxing. I mean, in terms of boxers and in the boxing fraternity, he was very well known. But amongst the casuals, that where the money really comes into play, nobody knew about Lomachenko. So... To have this fight with Lomachenko doesn't now mean that you're the man of the division or you're the man of boxing and you're supposed to get big money now. Lomachenko weren't getting big money. So don't understand how you're going to get big money. But all of a sudden, Tiafimo Lopez thinks that he deserves big money for these fights that he's going to have now. So with this fight happening, because when he fought Lomachenko, it was in the middle of the big sea. And while that was happening, there was no crowds, if you remember. No crowds at sports events. So while that was happening, they weren't really generating anything from the gates. But you're thinking that people are at home, so the pay-per-view buys should be through the roof. That was not the case. It didn't do well at the box office. And therefore, when they went to go and fight George Cambosis now, the offers that were made... Tiafimo didn't like the offers, so the fight went to a purse bid, and the purse bid was bidded by Top Rank, who's Tiafimo's promoter, Matchroom, who had nothing to do with it per se, they were just putting in a bid anyway, and 
a company called Triller who was said to be trying to make some strides into boxing. And they put in the biggest offer out of the three. And it was like almost double what the second biggest offer was, which was mad. But the fact of the matter is, the second biggest offer was from Matrim. So his own promoter wasn't even bidding highly for him because his own promoter knows the numbers and knows what he can generate and says, I'm not bidding any more than this because I'm not trying to lose money. So with that being said, the highest bidder won, they didn't actually put the fight on because of some sort of discrepancies with the actual funds that they said they were going to have. And then what eventually happened is they pulled out of the fight and Matchroom ended up having it because it went to the second highest bidder. So Matchroom puts the fight on, he then loses to George Cambosos. But what I'm saying about this is this little title defense took over a year to make. He should have had that fight. He had the fight with Lomachenko in like say October or something like this. That fight with George Cambosos should have happened by March latest May. Simple. But he waited for the whole year to go right round and go back to November of the next following year for him to have this fight because he was this he didn't like this money he didn't like that money he didn't like this venue he didn't like that venue like he was being a proper diva and by the time he was about to make up his mind the actual people that won the purse bid they pulled out so then they had to go to matchroom and then matchroom had to fit it on a time slot that was good for them and I remember George Cambosos, not George Cambosos, I remember Tia Fimo not wanting to fight for some reason. And then all of a sudden, George Cambosos had a slight injury there to put the fight back again. And all of these things were happening and pushed the fight right back, right back around to a year and a month after the actual win over Vasily Lomachenko. In this fight with George Cambosos, Tia Fimo Lopez loses, loses all the belts and starts his campaign again. But then he goes up to junior welterweight. These times, when Devin Haney got the title sent to him, emailed to him as they call it, he's the email type champion. He then started to defend the title. He still wanted to fight Lomachenko because he were he's like, I want to test myself against Lomachenko. I don't think he's this matrix that you guys want to keep calling him. I want to test myself against him. He loses to Tiafimo Lopez, he still wants to fight him, I don't mind, I still want to fight him, but I want to fight Tiafimo now so that we can be undisputed, and that was where the whole argument and the whole back and forth and he said, she said starts to come into play. Offers come from Tiafimo apparently, offers were coming from Devin Haley and his team apparently. The fight never actually got made and they both eventually moved up in weight. After Devin Haney goes to Australia twice, beating George Cambosos twice to then become the undisputed champion of the lightweight division. Officially, because he had all the belts, including the WBC belt, which he came into the fight with in the first place. So... After he beats George Cambosos twice, he's like, I want to defend my title against Vasily Lomachenko because this is supposed to be the guy. He has the Lomachenko fight. Everybody thinks that he lost that fight. I would say 60 to 70% of viewers thinks that he lost that fight. I don't know how accurate those numbers are. And personally, I can see where people think that he lost the fight, but I can also see where people say that he won the fight. So for me, it's neither here nor there. It's history. He's won that fight. He moved on and went up to the junior welterweight division and fights a great fight against Regis Progray and wins Regis Progray's super lightweight WBC title. Now, he is formally undisputed and a two-division champion. This is going into legacy now this is starting to be a resume that you can now talk about being part of a hall of fame resume because he fought all comers all the best that the lightweight could offer and then he fights and gets the undisputed title and then he officially beats lomachenko drops all the belts goes up in weight to super lightweight and then beats regis progate to become wbc champion ultimately making him a two division champion 
So, now they're both at super lightweight and they're both champions. And it's like, who's going to fight? Is they going to fight? Are they going to fight? Are they going to fight? Really and truly, after what happened with Ryan Garcia, it's a most definite situation for Devin Haney to calm himself down and get himself a tune-up fight before he comes back to fight a champion. There's all these talk going on on the internet that I don't really pay attention to. I don't like the drama. I don't like the back and forth thing. I just like when a fight's made and we go and watch the fight. That's all I care about. So this all, all this stuff that's going on on the internet with these two guys, it's a bit too much for me to really delve into and want to talk about. I actually do not want to focus on these type of situations. At the same time, Tiafimo Lopez said some crazy things in his um, interview with Cameron Mace on It Is What It Is. And I will have to delve into that in another video. But this is just bringing us up to speed with what's going on with these two in terms of their careers so far and how it got to this point where they're both at junior welterweight and the fight is not being made for a unification with these two at the moment. I basically think that Tiafimo Lopez should just go and get all the other belts at that weight class. He should make a campaign to go and get every other belt that's available at that weight class. With the champions being Jose Venezuela, WBA champion, and Liam Paro, who just beat Subriel Matias in a surprise victory in Subriel Matias' house. So that's what he should do, in my opinion, while Devin Haney is making his way back. Doesn't seem like the WBC are about to strip him or make him a champion in recess. He is just on his way back, deciding when he's going to come back. And I believe it might be December. So we'll see what happens with that. And we'll see also see what happens with Tiafimo Lopez. I'm going to do another video about some things that Tiafimo Lopez has been saying. And I'll see you guys in the next video.